Hello, everybody. Today we have Sharon, uh, Sharon Chen, Tim, and Yukiko Yabuta presenting Taiwanese Students Meet Japan, an EFL program. Sharon and Tim and Yukiko, the digital floor is yours. Okay, thank you. Um, hello, everyone. I am Sharon from National Kaohsiung University of Science and Technology. Uh, this is actually my first time presenting on the conference. And also, it is or, uh, it's also my very first time presenting online. And I hope my research um, will bring people together for some new ideas for uh, course design. And today, I would like to share my overview of Taiwanese students meet Japan and ELF program. So why, I, why would I conduct this uh, study? When it comes to learning English, most people will think, oh, you have to learn in an English speaking country. And for people, uh, for students in Asia, study in an English speaking country is quite expensive. And it takes time to take airplanes to countries to study. So, um, but most people will think study in an English speaking country would gain cultural insights and speaking listening skills are recognized um, the most beneficial gains. And even Taiwanese universities encourage students to study in the sister schools. But for uh, stand on the student side, uh, it's time consuming and money consuming. So if we could uh, conduct, uh, we can have a, a program in Asia country and we speak the same language, for example, like right now, I know uh, my mother tongue is not English and some of you uh, speak uh, language from different countries, but right now we speak the same language, English. So that's why I want to conduct this study. So I propose three research questions. The first one is, what is learners perception toward the effectiveness of an English as a lingua franca program? And the second one, what is instructor's perception of an English as a lingua franca, lingua franca program? And the third one is what components should be kept or modified in order to improve the effectiveness of an English as a, a lingua franca program? So the, uh, the significance of the study is to help uh, teachers to understand students' perspective and to improve program quality at the same time, teachers can do self-evaluation to check the, effective, the effectiveness of the program. And also it provides criteria for stakeholders and a reference for program or course organizer. So the concept EIL, English as an international language, focuses more on communication than accuracy. Um, that is a language of international and therefore intercultural communications. Um, a very famous scholar in 1985 proposed a theory that is concentric circle model. As you can see from these pictures, there are three circles, the inner circle, outer circle and expanding circle. Um, the inner circle refers to the native speakers Countries like uh, USA, UK, Australia, New Zealand belongs to this inner circle. The outer circle here uh, includes India, Bangladesh, Philippines, and Singapore. In those countries, English becomes more often used as a home language. The total number of outer space is about um, 300 to 500 million people. And the expanding circle is the uh, outer, outer circle uh, of this model. Uh, the expanding circle encompasses countries where English plays no historical or governmental role, but where it's nevertheless widely used as a medium of international communication. And this circle includes countries like China and Taiwan, Japan, and interestingly, most ELF communication takes place in this circle. And that is the reason why it is worthwhile to understand how the concept of EIL is used in an authentic context. Let's view how scholars view the notion of EIL. Uh, about a decade ago, uh, scholars still think, still think standard pronunciation is rated more, pos more positively. 
But after a decade, things has changed. Scholars hold different views. Uh, in 2006 and 2009, um, scholars think learners' English proficiency and negotiation skills are the goals of EIL, and non-native speakers' linguistic and cultural diversity could be the best promoters of EIL. And even uh, a famous scholar, Gretel, in 2008, proposed an ideal language course is the combination of EIL and ESP. ESP stands for English for Specific Purpose. That is, uh, language and cultural are interrelated. But when students are doing uh, ELF courses, there are some learning difficulties. The first one is unwillingness to communicate. And why calls the unwillingness to communicate? Because they are afraid of losing face. Um, for example, uh, when they are doing ELF uh, communications, they have fears of uh, negotiation and also inappropriate silence. And this inappropriate silence will terminate the conversation um, because they don't know how to uh, express their feelings. And so they just keep silence. So here comes my research design. This is a two week ELF program in Japan. And the course includes classroom sessions, field trips, cultural experiences, and homestay with Japanese family. The aim of this program is to help students uh, to use English as a medium for communication. There are totally 13 participants. Uh, four of them are postgraduates and nine are undergraduates. For instructors in Japan, there are five instructors. There are three Japanese, one Canadian, and one American. So I use three kinds of research instruments. Uh, Pre-survey before the program, mid-program interview in the middle of the program, and post-survey um, at the end of the final evaluate uh, at the end of the program. So in the pre-survey, um, there is that is a 20 minutes survey that I use five point uh, uh, five point leaker skills. And the purpose is to, uh, to know students' motivation and expectations of this intensive course. And this survey is about 20 minutes long. In the middle of the interview, um, I ask open ended questions so students can discuss more deeply about the question that I ask in the pre survey. And it's about 30 to 40 minutes long per person. And at the end of the program, I conduct a post survey and a final evaluation. It's about 30 to, five, uh, 30 to 50 minutes long. So at the same time, uh, instructors in Japan have an interview with me. And the interview is about how their uh, reflection about this course and what is their expectations. So here comes the findings. There are 10 interesting findings. As you can see from these charts, their overall effective, effectiveness of this program is dropping. But um, the, in the section of course design and motivation is growing, uh, it means students' uh, motivation is growing and also the course design is good. And the reason why the overall effectiveness is dropping is because of the development of EIL. And why the development of EIL is not successful is because um, Taiwanese students think there is a discrepancy between the student's English proficiency level. Uh, when a student think if there is a discrepancy, um, it's hard to communicate with Japanese students or even teachers. So, um, um, uh, so the development of EIL is not successful. And that's the reason why um, they think the effectiveness is not that good. But uh, on the other hand, there are some activities that students value, value the most. Um, there are four activities that students think are good. For example, Japanese food culture, Canadian studies, soba making, and homestay. And among those top four activities, homestay is rated the most great value 
activities. Students think this is a special experience that um, Taiwanese students can have an interaction with Japanese students in the class and also after class. And also um, Taiwanese students uh, think ch uh, challenge materials were expected um, because um, they think um, the material used in the program is easier than the one that they have expected and they hope they can learn something new from the material. And uh, meanwhile, Japanese instructors were surprised at Taiwanese students' English prof proficiency level. Um, they think um, Taiwanese students speak quite good English. And I think that's the reason why uh, instructors didn't uh, develop the materials that difficult. But uh, the communication between Taiwanese and Japanese students was successful. After a few days uh, interactions between students, they know how to uh, manipulate uh, some uh, nonverbal tools, for example, like uh, body language and electronic dictionary uh, during their conversation. And also the design of the final presentation helped the Taiwanese students to recall what they have learned from the program. Uh, it's like a sum up of um, the entire program to share what they have learned from the program. And as you can see, one student says, uh, final presentation is the most meaningful activity because it concludes everything we have learned from the past two weeks in the field of cultural differences. And in these courses, there are two kinds of courses. One is uh, joint classes and the other one is module classes. Joint classes means Taiwanese and, student, and, and Japanese students come together and to have a class together. So um, they can uh, interact with each other and see how Japanese teachers teach students. And joint classes are rated more beneficial in the development of cultural competence. But um, one of the communication workshops need modifications because um, students think they are quite confused about um, the purpose of the course. And I think uh, that it's one of the courses that need to modify. And the final, uh, the final finding is some students prefer module classes while more students prefer joint classes like what i have mentioned um, module classes is for taiwanese students only and joint classes is for taiwanese students and also japanese students um, some students prefer module classes because uh, i think uh, students have um, similar English proficiency level, but some students prefer joint classes because they think they like to interact with Japanese students. And if uh, students come to Japan and just have a module classes, it's like what students have in Taiwan. So they think uh, uh, joint classes is more uh, interesting. So the implication of my study is all students should meet each other before the program begins and more cultural uh, workshops are needed. And also the students' English proficiency level affects the development of English as an international language. But uh, the limitation is this study is just a, a small sample size and it's one shot study. Um, and this study only interview with Taiwanese students only. In conclusion, while we are uh, encourage students to attend this kind of international uh, intensive courses, we uh, as a course designer, we should focus more on program quality. And um, we need to know what students' preferences and how and what's the purpose of this program. Okay, uh, so that's the end of my presentation. And here comes my Q&A section. Is there any questions about my presentation? We have about 10 minutes left for questions. Uh, 
hello. Hi. Thank you, thank you for your presentation. That was very interesting. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I'm very interested in uh, like English as a lingua franca, and uh, I was wondering if the if the course gives them any opportunities to kind of learn kind of uh, techniques for English as a lingua franca. Uh, I, I've read about something called accommodation. So when when uh, when students kind of accommodate each other, and they might be using English in a different way to how it's used in the in a circle. I was wondering if if there's any they have any chance to to learn or practice that kind that kind of skill. You, you mean in a class or after class? Uh, yeah, uh, either. Either. Oh, uh, uh, in a class there are some activity designed for students. They can have uh, like a small talk during the class. So um, uh, the lecturer will give them private time to discuss a program or a project, and then they will present at the end of the class. And after class, uh, like I mentioned, there is a homestay activity. So students, um, Taiwanese students and Japanese students can uh, go back their home and to enjoy their um, time, whatever, for example, uh, hanging out, eating, uh, eating meals, or oh, they have a field trip with their Japanese family. So um, during these um, courses, it creates a lot of interaction between Taiwanese students and Japanese student to use an English as a lingua franca. That sounds great. Yeah, thank you very much. Very thank interesting. You. Any other questions? Thank, thank you very much for your, your presentation. And um, congratulations. I mean, that was very solid for your first time. You really did a good job. Thank you. Um, you mentioned the, the expression, silence can terminate communication. So I'm wondering, what are some of your ideas to help them to get over that silence so that communication is not terminated? Oh, sure. Um, in my opinion, I think the inappropriate silence uh, is because um, um, Taiwanese students and Japanese students, they are not friends. I mean, they are not familiar with each other and they are afraid of losing face. Uh, they are afraid of making grammatical mistakes or they don't know how to express their feelings. But uh, what I have observed from the program is when uh, students become more familiar with each other, they are friends. So they are not afraid of losing face. They sometimes when they don't know how to express, uh, they will try very hard to uh, think of a word or for example, like writing uh, Japanese characters because uh, some Japanese characters uh, looks similar like uh, Chinese character so they can guess the meaning. Also they use body language or they use internet to find pictures to explain uh, what they are expressing and then they can continue their conversation. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. I have about five minutes left if anybody has any questions. I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording here. So if everybody can go ahead and unmute your microphones and give a big round of applause for Sharon and Tim and uh, Yukiko, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.